that we are blessed to be in the company of righteous ulama and righteous scholars. Alhamdulillah, on behalf of the entire community, I'd like to welcome him. And as I read his uh, introduction, so mashallah, Sheikh is very humble. He does not like it, but so Sheikh Mukhtar, mashallah, he was born in 1955. And to summarize, as I know he would not like for his detailed bio, but alhamdulillah, he has uh, had the honor of studying with and being in the suhbah and the fellowship of multiple leading ulama of our time. Of them, uh, Sheikh Mustafa Al-A'lami, rahimahullah, who many of us might be hearing for the first time. But Sheikh Mustafa actually is one of the leading authorities in the sciences of hadith in the past century. And I cannot uh, recommend enough, as you can ask any scholar, when someone comes about a question about hadith and doubts about the hadith process, response to Orientalists, uh, Sheikh Mustafa Al-A'lami is the first to write in such detail in the English language. And his works are a marja, it's a source for scholars to go back to. And reality is that uh, he is considered the authority without a doubt. And Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Mukhtar studied with him. And I also saw today that he actually bequeathed his library to the Sheikh, which is uh, the ulama or the people of, of knowledge or the students know that when someone bequeaths their library, meaning they gift their library after their passing to someone, this is a sign of how happy they are and how much potential they see in a person. So Alhamdulillah, he also was in the suhbah of Sheikh Muhammad Amin Al, one of the leading scholars, MashaAllah, who studied and were, was in the suhbah of the scholars of Asham in the uh, area of Syria today. We ask that Allah Azza wa Jal relieve all of our brothers and sisters there and around the world. Uh, after that, he was in the United States for a very long time. He has served as a resident scholar in multiple areas in Troy, other parts of New York as well as Plano in the Dallas area. And currently he resides in Turkey where he leads the as Seminary, which if you go to uh, his website, uh, you can find the details of the as Seminary program, a beautiful program that combines uh, traditional knowledge as well as the science of Tezkiyah and the science of purification. This is his uh, official bio. But I think a lot of us are here, and I would start with myself, because we have fond memories of the past uh, listening to the sheikh. And I can vividly remember in the early 2000s, uh, those that were with me at that time, it's been a few decades now, but he was, mashallah, of the pioneers of the dua to the mashayikh that were at that time building communities, nurturing communities, and he used to visit here uh, every year, I believe, for the retreat in the Ozarks. Many of you who've been here might remember from that time. And he would deliver the Jum'ah Khutbah, and alhamdulillah, we were less, less than honored to have him uh, visit our community many times. But a couple of things I wanted to highlight about the Sheikh, and I think we can benefit from it. The first thing is that you'll notice that there's a lot of emphasis that he puts on the science of Tezkiyah, spirituality, and in particular, when we really translate that on things that are difficult to find today, like etiquettes and mannerisms, importance of stressing on cleanliness of the heart, uh, very, very important things that can really transform people. And uh, just as I was coming, someone from who had lived in the Plano community, they told me that actually one of the things they, they saw the transformation in their masjid when he was there was that the habit of people sitting after the salah for their adhkar and their sunan to complete them. Now, it seems like something small and insignificant, but the reality is it's these beautiful things that are a part of the sunnah that are very hard to adopt. But alhamdulillah, he did a beautiful job in that community and they still remember him. And I believe he's coming from there to us. So alhamdulillah, those are uh, some of his uh, peculiar, mashallah, features of his teachings. Uh, also, we are blessed in our community to have several people. Mufti Asa mentioned Ustad Mu'atasim is here, mashallah founder of the uh, Al Madina Institute, as well, Dr. Zulekha Jalal and Dr. Raza Jalal. Uh, and Dr. Zulekha, who is a 
resource for the sisters, mashallah, uh, great uh, chance for them to gain from her mentorship. She and Dr. Raza Jalal are both students of Sheikh Mukhtar. So this is another beautiful feature of producing people that are going to lead the community. Mashallah, Ustad Mu'tasim in the Baltimore area. He runs the Al Madina, one of the most biggest conferences, Pearls of Faith, beautiful conference. Uh, Dr. Raza Jalal, mashallah, he hosted uh, and he has been the one that has brought the Sheikh here. So on behalf of the entire community, we'd like to thank him. Uh, every year, I would ask him, is Sheikh Mukhtar coming? And he said, I'm trying. And he's been trying for a long time and Allah answered his dua. So Alhamdulillah, on behalf of the entire community, we thank him. But the important thing is these individuals, as well as their son Hamza, who's here, mashallah, uh, he studied in the as seminary, mashallah. And uh, Alhamdulillah, he also studied with the Sheikh. So people in our community that are benefiting, they are a result of the Sheikh. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal that he accepts all of his efforts. He puts barakah in his life and he allows to be from those that follow in the path of the righteous scholars uh, and stay on the path of guidance. Inshallah, I'd request the Sheikh to please uh, benefit us with his wisdom and request to everyone to inshallah, please uh, be seated. Benefit, inshallah, and afterwards we have some refreshments. We have a community cafe like we do on Mondays, inshallah, afterwards. So please, inshallah, stay in full and inshallah ta'ala benefit. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. كيف أمسيتم؟ أمسينا وأمس الملك لله والحمد لله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير ربي أسألك خير ما في هذه الليلة وخير ما بعدها ربي أعوذ بك من شر ما في هذه الليلة ومن شر ما بعدها ربي أعوذ بك من الكسل وسوء الكبر ربي أعوذ بك من عذاب في النار ومن عذاب في القبر اللهم اغفر لي ما لا يعلمون واجعلني خيرا مما يظنون Allah, please forgive me that which they do not know of me and make me better than what they think of me. Bismillah, alladhi la ilaha siwah, walhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran abadan sarmada, hamdan yaliqu bi jamalihi wa jalalihi wa kamalihi fi jamalihi wa jalalihi. حمدا يليق بجزيل وعظيم عطائه ونعمائه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف أنبيائه سيدنا ومولانا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك Ya Allah, please open the hearing channels of our hearts to your dhikr, to all that which reminds us of you. I am to share with you some reflections and thoughts, first of all for me to benefit, and then hopefully for those who listen to benefit as well. On the subject of Seeking the divine, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the few minutes we have. Hafizakumullah, as you know, as Muslims in particular, the concept of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fundamental. If we're not aware of it, then we must be aware of it. Because we are brought into this world for the ultimate purpose to seek the divine, to be in loving, unconditional 
loving surrender and ubudiya and servitude loving servitude to him subhanahu wa ta'ala this life is meant for us to be a journey back home we were at home where were we at home in jannah in the genome of our father adam and then what happened happened as you all know perhaps we make it brief and then we had to leave home to come to this world and because there was a mistake there was an error there was a choice of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the result of that is being here on earth but Allah azza wa jal has given us a chance to go back home and all our lives on earth is our striving when we know and we desire and we will to try to go back home this time safely if we arrive home forever if we don't then it's forever never at home again that's what it means so the objective of being here on earth اصدنا من وجودنا على هذه الارض هو اراده الله عز وجل ان نريد الله ان نقصد الله عز وجل our objective in being here on earth is to will the divine to want the divine to seek the divine practically speaking going back home to be forever with the divine in jannah it is that simple but that beautiful so as human beings meant to undergo the journey we first want and need to want that to seek that we must be conscious we must have a resolve to undertake the journey willingly by choice with fervor with intensity that never wavers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about that desire that we should all have as human beings when for example Allah says kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha if we ponder that text which means everything perishes except his countenance subhanahu wa ta'ala except his wajh subhanahu wa ta'ala since he's telling me kullu shay halik everything perishes that's the end of it that's the object the, the destiny of it everything not only physical but a physical mental psychological emotional every drive in me if it is not wajhahu for his wajh it has no value and everything created halik halik in other words comes to uh, to perdition to perishing except he if i know that then what should i live for for that which perishes or that which is forever constant and everything besides the divine perishes number 1 كل شيء هالك الا وجه then i should in what i seek even in this dunya of legitimate objectives they must be if i understand this well they must be a channel for me to him azza because what i seek in this dunya even legitimate perishes kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha 
And every deed I perform, every deed I perform, whether it is individual or collective, has no value except when it is channeled and enveloped in his rida, in what pleases him azzawajal. In other words, the value of what I do is also halik, perishes, unless I do that for my desire of him. Kullu shay'in halikun illa wajah. And says Allah Azza wa Jal also, وَصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا Usbir nafsak. Be perseverantly patient. And he's telling this to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What about us? Usbir nafsaka. Be perseverantly patient in the company of those who seek his countenance, subhanAllah. Those who Invoke their Lord and seek his countenance, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah is told to be in the company of those who seek their Lord. And who is teaching them to seek their Lord? Rasulullah is the ultimate seeker of the Rabb of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he's, Allah is telling him, be with those now students of yours who are seeking Allah Azza wa Jal. Who are seeking Allah Azza wa And wala ta'adu aynaka anhum. It literally says, and don't allow your gaze, your eyes to sway away from them. Like it's a metaphor to say, be with them, watch them, care for them. Envelop them in your caring gaze. La ta'adu aynaka anhum. Turidu zinat al hayat al dunya, in case you don't do that and instead seek the adornments of the life of this world. Because it all, it all perishes. Seek the divine. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So seeking the divine is uh, of the prime and first principles in the meaning of human existence and human life. And we can go on and talk a lot about that first part, but we have only the total of 40 minutes. So I keep reminding myself and then you, the next step is it is not only important to seek the divine, to seek him as Zawjil, but as important, if not more important, to be sadiq in seeking him, Azza To be true in seeking him, Azza To be ardent in seeking him, Azza To be unwavering, uncompromising in seeking him, Azza Nothing, nothing has the same priority than that, whether it rains or shines, whether in adversity or in prosperity, whether in private or in public. I continue to seek him no matter what happens to me or around me in my life of positive or negative experiences. Is that clear? Sidqut Talab, it is called. As our ulama put it, they say, "Fakat al talab wa al qasd, wa inna ma sidq al talabi wa sidq fi al qasd." To be genuine and true in my claim of seeking Him, Azza wa Jal. 
Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. It's a command. Oh you who believe, attaqullah, have taqwa in your heart for Allah Azza wa Jal. Taqwa, that Allah consciousness inside of us. When we are aware and conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal and also being careful and on guard against anything we allow ourselves in our hearts and minds to reside which is not agreeable to Allah Azza wa Jal. Nattaqi, nattaqi Allah. Nattaqa in the Arabic language means literally to what? To shield, to protect, to cover, to guard. And wiqaya is protection. Ittaqillah, i.e. guard your mind, your heart, your soul inside of you from allowing anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't approve of, is displeased with, of feelings or emotions or drives or intentions. And then he says, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ And be in the company of those who are صادقون Mean those who are true and truthful. Not only as if subhanahu wa ta'ala here is telling us, have taqwa and be صادق in your taqwa. وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ Not only be muttaqi, لكن كن صادقا في تقواك. Be true. In your taqwa. And not only be sadiq, but also be in the company of those who are sadiq. Taqullah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Not only, i.e., in agreeing with them and to be in harmony with them, but also to be in their presence. Because we affect one another positively or negatively. If we are in the company of uh, people who have certain negative etiquettes and attributes, we rub, socially speaking and psychologically speaking, we rub against them and we get to their characteristics whether positive or negative. You all know that as Muslims and the famous example of Rasulullah of the person who sits in the company of one who sells perfume, the store of a perfume seller, and the one who go and sits in the workshop of the one who is a, a, a blacksmith. If you don't buy from the store, at least you will get the freshness and the beautiful odors and scent on your body from the store. And with the blacksmith, so the smoke, the, the ashes, the, the, the fire will also somehow reach you. Kunu ma and be in the company of those who are sadiqun. Very important and very essential. So the concept of Sidqut Talab, we have to be true in that. Now, what is a Sidq fi Talab? What is a Sidq? Uh, many ulama have said in explaining that that a Sidq is an takuna ma Allah muafiqan lil haq. في السر والعلانية وفي السراء والضراء صدق صدق طلب الله عز وجل is when we are with Allah we are with the حق سبحانه وتعالى and with the truth that is divine we are with that whether we are in privacy or in public. Whether we're alone, nobody sees, nobody witnesses, nobody knows, or when we are in public, inside 
It's the same. It's the same. I fear him whether I'm alone or in public. I love him whether I'm alone or in public. I am pleased with him whether I'm alone or in public. I have haya from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm bashful of him, azzawajal, whether I'm alone or in public. I'm a trustworthy person, whether I am alone or in public, whether I'm in a land where everybody knows me or in a land where nobody knows me because they're all strangers. Sabr. And also, whether in adversity or whether in ease and prosperity, I am the same. Sabr. Because Sidq truthfulness, most of us, of course, know that's part of it. Sidq in speech, that we do not lie. That's, of course, part of it. But I did not emphasize that because I think all of us know that and remember that. But what we don't often remember is the Sidq of the heart. The Sidq of the inner drives the sidq of our inner claims, the involvement of our hearts in what we say and what we do. Allah says in the Quran, Rijalun, in describing some of the companions of Allah Ta'ala anhum, the mu'minun, Rijalun, man, not just masculine, gender. رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه Men who are true, صادق, truthful in their commitment to Allah Azza wa Jal in their word to Allah Azza wa Jal in their covenant with Allah Azza wa Jal in their pledge of allegiance and of obedience and of sur- sur- loving surrender and submission to Allah Azza They are true in it. They actualized it in their lives, whether it rains or shines, whether alone or in public, whether in difficulty or in ease. They give their lives to uphold and preserve their commitment to Allah Azza wa It's not because sometimes when we are faced with some challenges in dunya, for example, and I'm practicing fasting and I'm practicing control of my nafs, and the next challenge that comes, I, I maybe I hang on for 10, 15 minutes and I give in. After that, oh, it's after all not haram. It's not haram, so let me indulge. And I, of course, say, I say to myself, "Woman haram azin, qul man haram azin at Allah lati akhrij li ibadihi wa tayyibati min al rizq." And I find all the, all the self-made arguments to legitimate or to legitimize for myself my lack of himma, my lack of resolve, my lack of sadq in my pledge, in my commitment. The, the next challenge, I give up. For example, I promise myself to be, to, be, to be kind in my family, to be forgiving in my family. But then I do that and I do that and then challenge and another challenge and I, I give up and I come back to my habits of screaming and, and yelling. Yet I know, I know that not to yell, not to scream, to forgive, to pardon, Allah loves it and I want that. I want that, but am I sadiq in wanting that? Here's the case. When I give in, as soon as the first signs of challenge come to me, I give up and I give in. So I'm not sadiq in my pursuit of Improving my character. (laughs) 
سيدنا عبد القادر الجيلاني قدس الله روحه said in a very powerful and beautiful statement as a teaching to his students and those who listen to him and he is the he is a master of masters when it comes to the conditions of the hearts and the sadq of the hearts he said i'm going to first say it in arabic quoting and then we'll continue elaborating on the meaning. He said that Rahimahullah Ta'ala addresses the audience and says to everybody, Mali, uh, his audience were scholars, students of ilm, and regular people. He says, Mali Araka fi qiyamin wa qu'udin wa ruku'in wa sujudin wa saharin وتعب ونصب وقلبك لم يبرح عن مكانه ولم يتحول عن عادته أصدق في طلب مولاك وقد أغناك عن الكثير من التعب and so on. And he continues to say a lot more beauty of meanings. This says, he says, why do I see you standing and sitting and kneeling in ruku'ah and prostrating in sujood and see you exhausting yourself, working hard, sleeping late, not having enough sleep. This is all in deeds, in actions, in ibadat. And yet, your heart is yet to move from its location. And yet, your heart is yet to move anywhere. And, I see that your heart, yourself, did not change from its regular habits. And then he says, by that meaning, this is the reason. Usduk, verb of command. I mean, be sadiq, be true. في طلب مولاك in your claim of seeking your Lord سبحانه وتعالى be صادق and if you are صادق أصدق في طلب مولاك then less hard work will suffice you isn't it obvious does it need commentaries External deeds, yes, alhamdulillah. Rukur, sujood, qiyam, tilawa. Ilm, learning ilm, imparting ilm, teaching ilm, da'wah, activities, tijara, commerce, business, working, doing, but all of that is external. All that external change is not accompanied with a spiritual, internal change. It says, your heart, you move, but your heart didn't move. Like the one who is on a treadmill, running, running, running on a treadmill. Where is he going? Didn't move right there, didn't go anywhere. And then sweats and so on and so forth. But he didn't go anywhere. It's modern times, you know. People in modern times do these things. They run going nowhere. They sweat going nowhere. And yet my qalb didn't change, didn't move, meaning the conditions of my qalb didn't move, meaning it didn't change. It's not a physical motion, it's a spiritual motion. 
It's a moral motion. It's an internal, psychological motion, even mental motion. For example, I am a person who is impatient. Did I through all of that change and became a little bit even more patient? Maybe not at all. I'm still the same person. When I was 15 and 17, young and impatient, and same thing when I'm 50. Didn't change. Or arrogance, kibr, kibriya. Person of us who has kibr, and with time, with salah, with siyam, with zakah, with hajj, with sadaqah, with umrah, with dhikr, with ilm, with kada. But I'm still an arrogant person. My heart didn't move, didn't go anywhere. I'm still a person who is who loves to be celebrated, ostentatious. I learned through learning and through becoming more, you know, more learned and more resourceful. I became to delight in being celebrated. I like to perform in front of others. My heart likes that. I didn't change. I had lack of haya, for example. I had lack of bashfulness, lack of feeling uncomfortable when I'm alone, especially in doing things or saying things that Allah doesn't love. And I do that because I don't have haya in me. And then 20 years later, I'm the same person. My heart didn't move, didn't change, etc. So when he says, what it means, if I have sidq talab and sidq talab resides in the heart, my feeling my notion of being true to Allah in seeking Allah is something of the heart. It's not something external. The external manifestations of how I use my senses come from the state of my heart. So he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, wake up. Usduq fi talabi mawla. Usduq fi talabi mawla. This is where it begins. First of all, seeking him now, let me develop by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, let me learn to develop Sidq al-Talab, Sidq al-Tawajjuh, Sidq al-Qasdi in Allah Azza wa Jal. Let me learn to develop that. Part of the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, excuse me, used to say, اللهم اجعل سريرتي خيرا من علانيتي واجعل علانيتي صالحا end of quote oh Allah please make my sarira that is my inner being my inner mind my inner soul my inner heart what I am inside make it more beautiful than what I am outside Not only if Allah gave me an external appearance that looks in the eyes of others as beautiful, make me inside more beautiful than that. If my external actions are beautiful, make my internal image even more beautiful. That's what it says. Ijal sarirati khayran min alaniyati. And also make my alaniya, my exterior, my external image through my deeds, etc. Make that also righteous, Ya Allah. But make me inside even more beautiful than I am outside. Inna ma bu'ithu li utammima 
مكارم الأخلاق this falls into that as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that verily I have been sent basically and essentially إنما تفيد الحصر that is it uh, it implies in the Arabic language limiting this is it my mission to you is this limited in all of this to complete the most beautiful akhlaq and al-khuluq is what we are inside we call it character character is the external realization of what we are inside my internal image is my khuluq my external image facial or body image is called what in arabic khalq that's khalq versus khuluq same letters khalq is external khuluq is internal so that's why when we look at a mirror every time we look at a mirror and i'm sure everyone here looks at a mirror some of us many times a day perhaps especially sisters so i remind sisters and then you and me about this he said Sallallahu every time you look at a mirror say this dua allahumma kama hassanta khalqi fahassin khuluqi wa harrim wajhi ala nar so when we look at a mirror usually we look at a mirror you know why if there is something that I believe some other people don't think it is attractive. I change it, right? I brush here and a brush there and this and that. The beard, and the hair, and the shirt. And we do that, right? We want to change it to what we perceive is more attractive, actually most likely to others. And remember, all others perish. So when we look at a mirror, Rasulullah did not teach us to say, Ya Allah, make me beautiful externally, or make me even more beautiful than I am. He says, you say, Ya Allah, as you made me externally beautiful. You know what this means? What is it telling you? That you are beautiful. Externally, everyone is beautiful. Don't worry about what she thinks, what he thinks, what they think. We're not Bollywood or Hollywood people. Subhanallah, he says, كَمَا حَسَّنْتَ خَلْقِي Ponder this. Rasulullah s.a.w. utiya jawami' al-kalim. Allah s.a.w. gave him the hidden treasures of eloquence. So when he said that, it has a meaning, it has a purpose, it has a reason. كَمَا حَسَّنْتَ خَلْقِي As you made me beautiful. Anyone who looks at a mirror, he says that. He says, you say that. Anyone. But, he says, you say, فَحَسِّنْ خُلُقِي Then we ask him to make beautiful my inner image. Because I don't know that. I don't see that. That's not what is exposed to people, and that's how we are going to meet Allah with. This body will decay in the grave. But what remain are the the values. What I chose to adorn my inner heart with. That goes to Allah. And that's how Allah will judge us. Not on account of what we look out, we looked out physically in this dunya. That has no bearing. Make yourself as pretty as you want. As you think you are. Some make themselves uglier and uglier, and they think they're making themselves prettier and prettier. Wallahi la ilaha illahu. Ugliness and beauty are relative in the eye, inner eye of the beholder. If my inner eye is myopic, it's going to see things externally, not the way they really are. 
Isn't it true? But what remains and goes to Allah are that which is not physical, like having the akhlaq, patient or impatient, arrogant or humble, bashful or unbashful, generous or greedy, forgiving or merciless, just or unjust, forbearing or not forbearing, ostentatious or one with humility. This is what counts. As Rasulullah said, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa ashkalikum ولكن ينظر إلى أعمالكم وقلوبكم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look, i.e. does not judge you on the basis of your looks and your external features. Allah لا ينظر the divine, the, the ultimate, infinite beauty, the divine. He's telling you, I don't even look at your external thing that you spend most of your time brushing up. I don't even look at it. I look every day at your heart. Allah says, Rasulullah ila your actions, your deeds, and your hearts. We go back to, and your heart did not move from its place. And your heart did not move from its place. أصدق في طلب مولاك وقد أغناك عن الكثير من التعب. I conclude with the, the next observation. And our masters of the ulama, and the awliya of this ummah, Sayyidina wa Mawlana, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. One of them had said, and I believe it was Sayyiduna Yahya ibn Mu'adh al-Razi. Not the Imam al-Razi, the, the commentator and the, you know, and the alim. This is a man known for, for his frugality and his spirituality and his um, incredible, beautiful characteristics. One of the one of the milestones of Islamic um, morality and spirituality. And by the way, originally he was issued from a Christian family. Sayyidina Mu'adh, Yahya ibn Mu'adh al-Razi. He embraced Islam, his family embraced Islam, and he and his brother were both spiritual luminaries. Now their names are, mashallah, in a sense, uh, immortalized by the believers. He says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Shariba Siddiquna min thalathati anhar. He speaks in metaphors. He says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the Siddiqun, plural of Siddiq, you all know Siddiq, right? Siddiq is the emphasis, the hyperbole in language of the word Sadiq, Sirat Mubalagha. Sadiq is truthful. Siddiq is always consistent, true in truthfulness. Siddiq, Abu Bakr as Siddiq, not just Abu Bakr as Sadiq, Abu Bakr as Siddiq. He said, The Siddiqun have drunk from three rivers. Have drunk. They have inside of them. These waters from three rivers. Number one, min nahri asabr, wa min nahri rida, wa min nahri alhaya. End of quote. The Siddiqun have drunk from the three rivers. The river, first of all, of patience. That means they are very patient in their claim of seeking Allah Azza wa Jal. They are very patient with, happen, with what happens in their lives of ups and downs as they relate everything to Allah Azza wa Jal. Yasbiruna ma'Allah. No matter what happens to them. 
health or illness, richness or poorness, ease or difficulty, fear or security. They do not complain of Allah. They do not say, why me? What did I do? They, did not, they do not give up with the first uh, manifestation of challenge in their relationship to Allah Azza wa Jal. For example, their commitment to improve their akhlaq or in their, let's say, practice of generosity, or in their practice of forgiveness, or in their practice of salah, or in their, in their practice of the supergatory salawat, and siyam, but not any challenge or the first challenge or many challenges stop them. They continue. When they make a promise, when they make an agreement, they will honor it no matter what it takes of difficulties. That's sadiq in your promise. So they are sadiq with Allah Azza wa Jal. Yasbiruna ala dhalik. Sabr, sabr, sabr. This is, they drunk from the river of sabr, meaning they have a lot of sabr with Allah Azza wa Jal. Second, they drank from the river of rida. You know the word rida. Don't we say that? Allah, make me one who is radi, mardi, one who is pleased with Allah Azawajal, and Allah, you be pleased with me. Radi meaning I accept. I lovingly surrender in acceptance to whatever manifests itself in my life knowing that it is all the qada and qadr of Allah Azza wa As long as I do my best in obeying Allah Azza wa with doing my best in obeying Allah Azza wa whether in matters of ibadat or in matters of adat and mu'amalat. Understand? As long as I do myself shar'an, I do my best, Shar'an to obey him Azza wa Jal, then what happens to me? Arda bi qada illah. Arda bi qada illah. And that's very difficult. So they have drunk from the river of riba. Whether Allah gives me or withholds from me. Radi. And the giving and withholding is not only material thing. The internal conditions inside of us. We think only of Zahir Ni'am. Talking about Al Ni'am al Batina, the internal bounties and favors of Allah. Whether He gives or He withholds, Radin bi Qadailah. That's because they are Sadiq in their seeking of Allah Azza wa And thirdly, he said, and they drank from the river of haya, sleep. Haya, bashfulness. That um, I think that feeling inside of us of feeling uncomfortable if we ever offend the other. Feeling uncomfortable in the face of offending the other. So if we say something or do something that somehow we feel, just we feel it offends the other, another fellow being. We feel uncomfortable. We feel shy. So we don't do that. Rasulullah sallallahu was described as having so much haya that he had more haya than an unmarried young woman in her private quarters. Wow. An unmarried woman, young woman, in those earlier days when there was haya, 14 centuries ago. Ashaddu haya'an min al-adra'i fi khidriha. 
كان أشد حياء من العذراء في خدرها This young woman who has never known a man Now she feels very preserved very very sharp the complexion changes quickly if she sees a man let alone talks to a man where is that and haya in man and haya in man says rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or a companion said al haya hasan walakinahu fi an nisa ahsan haya is beautiful That is from men and women. But from women, it's even more beautiful. Haya. Yet more haya than a young unmarried woman in her private quarters. So now haya from Allah Azza wa Jal. Sharibu min nahri al-haya. The sadiqun, in other words, when they are, whether alone or in public, they feel haya. From Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's a sign of truthfulness in our seeking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without these values, we are lacking at least in our claim of the attribute of Sidq and the attribute of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya Rabbi, forgive us all. May Allah forgive our shortcomings our transgressions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us intellectually and morally and psychologically and spiritually. May he equip us and enable us, Ya Rabbi, to be really sadiqun. To be sadiqun in seeking him. And that would facilitate so much hardship for us in this dunya while seeking him, Azza wa Jal. It will help our hearts change, change to the better, to become truly ibad, loving ibad, sincere loving ibad of Allah Azza wa Jal, and to be examples for the world, and to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection with a heart that beautiful. As Allah says, through the tongue of Sayyidina or Mawlana, إبراهيم على رسولنا عليه الصلاة والسلام ولا تخزني يوم يبعثون يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم يا الله do not cause me to be despised and rejected on the day when all will be resurrected on the day when nothing will be of any benefit and avail to anyone. Neither wealth, nor resources and offsprings, except the one who comes to you with a heart that is salim, that is sound and, and peaceful and balanced. I seek Allah's forgiveness and pardon refuge if I said anything that is improper and incorrect and I seek your pardon and if I said anything correct it is his grace his tawfiq his bountiful generous benevolent aid I seek refuge in him that I remind you of him and yet myself forget him please keep me in your dua keep each other in our dua Keep our parents, loved ones in our dua. Keep this Muslim ummah in our dua. Allah mansur ikhwanan al-mustadhafina fi Gaza ta Palestine, wal Yemen wa Lebanon wa jamia bilad al-dunya wa bilad al-Muslimin. Ya Rabbi hafzna bima tafzu bihi ibadak al-salihin. Ya Rabbi jalna wa iyaahum nasirin laka bika mansurin. هادين مهديين لا ضالين ولا مضلين لا باغين ولا عادين ولا ظالمين إنك لطيف لما تشاء إنك على كل شيء قدير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته